Hello everyone and welcome to my NFL 2022 prediction and preview video. Uh, this will be the first of a few videos that I will be doing going over all of the teams and my projected win-loss records for each of them, as well as taking a look at the top five offensive and defensive players in each division. So today we are starting out with the AFC East and we are going to start with the team that has everyone talking the Buffalo Bills. So the Buffalo Bills have been one of the best teams in the NFL over the previous few seasons. Last season they went 11-6. and six. There were a lot of games that the Bills should have won. Um, one that immediately comes to mind is the Monday night football game against the Tennessee Titans where they had a chance to win it in the last few seconds, but they decided to go for it instead of taking a field goal, and that ultimately cost them the game. Um, so... Of course, that ended in a loss in the divisional round. Um, everybody will probably remember that game most fondly as the touchdown slinging competition between Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen. And it's been a tough ride for the Bills. The um, Kansas City Chiefs have been the roadblock in the path of the Buffalo Bills' glory. Um, and, of course... What do I think will happen this season? We'll get to that in just a minute. But that remains a large part of the focus going into this upcoming season. Is not only how to take on the Kansas City Chiefs, but also how do you take on your own division now? Of course, the Miami Dolphins added a slew of great offensive weapons, which we'll be talking about shortly here. Um, but the New York Jets also got a lot better. Um, the New England Patriots will always be good under Bill Belichick, um, so you'd, we really don't need to discuss that in depth. Um, even though the Patriots did not have a great offseason by many standards, um, they still are a formidable team. The Buffalo Bills decided to deal with this by having one of the better offseasons in the NFL. They added Von Miller who is coming off of his second Super Bowl, um, first with the Denver Broncos, second with the Rams. And he is going to be an immediate impact player on their defense. I mean, when you can get a player of Von Miller's caliber in free agency with a, a team that is already pretty well established, you just can't beat that. They also added some good offensive line pieces, such as Roger Saffold. And they also had a great draft. They drafted Kair Elam, a cornerback, I really like that pick. I think that he is going to be a great weapon to add within their cornerback um, group. Of course, Tredavious White is coming off of a injury, so who knows how he will play. I think Kair could eventually replace him. They might let him walk in free agency. But if they choose not to, that will be a great duo to have um, on their defensive end. Now, taking a look at their schedule... A lot of people might initially look at the Buffalo Bills schedule and think, man, they have a rough go. However, the thing that you have to realize is the Buffalo Bills are now the team that all of these other teams, even the big name teams, are going to be looking at and dreading when they have to play against them. Of course, you know, you start out week one with the Rams, you have the Titans, you have the Ravens, you have the Chiefs. You have the Packers, the Bengals. I mean, again, the list goes on and on. But we're talking about the Buffalo Bills. We're talking about Josh Allen, potentially the best quarterback in the NFL. And do I think it's crazy to say that I think they will go 15-2? and two? If you look at my predictions, of course, no. I think that the Buffalo Bills are that good of a team. Um, I think a Week 4 matchup versus the Ravens, I think Lamar Jackson being back. Um, of course, we will get to my Ravens predictions in a different video. They're not in the AFC East. Um, but I think the Ravens will also have a really good season this upcoming season. Um, and I think that they'll probably be maybe, potentially, of course, I have them losing to the Dolphins in Week 15. But I think there might be another game here or there that they might slip up and lose. But I don't foresee the Bills losing that many games, especially with... Their added depth now, um, and their improvement over some of their key positions that they were lacking last year. So overall, I think they'll go 15-2, and two, and we will see if this will be good enough for them to win their division. I'm going to give you a hint. It is. All right, so next up, we have the New England Patriots. One of the more surprising slash 
interesting teams this past offseason. The New England Patriots, of course, have been a relatively consistent NFL franchise. I mean, that helps when you have one of the best coaches of all time and the best quarterback of all time. Now, of course, there were some growing pains the first year after Tom Brady left, but a man by the name of Mac Jones fell into the Patriots' lap, and they have not looked back. They went 10-7 and under him, but suffered an embarrassing loss in the wild card round against the Buffalo Bills. Now, of course, you would think the New England Patriots would probably try to spend their entire offseason surrounding Mac with new weapons and new ways to help improve his existing repertoire um, to help him improve as a quarterback because as much as people might not want to admit it, you're not going to win a Super Bowl unless you have a good quarterback. Well, if you look under the key additions to the New England Patriots this offseason— They only added Devontae Parker. Now, there is no disrespect to Devontae Parker. He is an excellent wide receiver. If you're going to be a good team, Devontae Parker should be your second or third wide receiving option. I cannot foresee there being a team that could realistically go to a Super Bowl where he is your number one option. And based on the current list of New England Patriot wide receivers, Devontae Parker will be Mac Jones' number one option. Now, of course, this is Bill Belichick, and the one thing that Bill Belichick does consistently well is he finds a way to utilize players. And now, again, Devontae Parker is not a bad player. He is an excellent player. But I don't think when you're going up against teams that have Stephon Diggs and Tyreek Hill, this is really going to set you apart from them. And I think that shows in my projections for their games over this upcoming season. Now, again, just like the Bills, they have a tough schedule. But again, the Patriots are always going to be a good team. They're going to beat up on the teams like the Jets. They're going to beat up on teams like the Bears. And I think if you put them in certain situations, they can beat teams like the Browns. In fact, if you look at the schedule, I think they'll beat up teams like the Ravens. I mean, the the Patriots are a very good and very consistent football team. The issue is consistency in coaching can only take you so far if you don't have the weapons. And the thing we have to remember is Mac Jones has come into his second season and the expectations are going to be high on him. They didn't have a great draft, in my opinion. They reached with their first few picks. And I think it will be a very interesting year. Overall, I only have them l- losing one game compared to last year, so I have them going 9-8. and eight. But again, it remains to be seen if this will be good to make it into the playoffs. Um, and we will have to look at the other teams in the division to see how they shake out to determine this. Moving on from the Patriots, we now go to the Miami Dolphins. Now, the Miami Dolphins had a surprising offseason, to say the least. Um, last year, they went 9-8. and eight. They missed the playoffs. They fired their head coach, so they have a fresh new head coach coming in. Tua Tungavailoa is a interesting player, to say the least. You have some people who think that he still has potential to be one of the better quarterbacks in the NFL, and you have some people who think he's a bust and that they should move on from him. And I don't know how the Dolphins feel, but I know that they are giving him every single opportunity this year to prove that. In fact, I think this year is going to be Tua's make-or-break year. Why do I say that? You don't trade for a player like Tyreek Hill if you don't do that. Tyreek Hill was one of the most surprising moves in the offseason. The fact he ended up in Miami is incredible for Tua, but also shocking if you're Tua. Because again, this shows you that this team is ready to win now, and if you don't cut it, I could easily foresee them moving on from Tua. Now with that being said, they not only gave him Tyreek Hill, they also gave him Taron Armstead, who is one of the best tackles in the NFL, is going to help a much-needed positional upgrade, which is on the offensive line for the Dolphins, Again, it's going to give Tua more time to make decisions to feed the ball to Tyreek Hill or Jalen Waddle or any of the other weapons he has, Mike Jaseski. And not only that, 
one of the moves that I don't think anyone is talking about enough is the fact that they also got Teddy Bridgewater. Now, Teddy is not going to start, but Teddy is a serviceable quarterback who has experience leading good teams. So if Tua doesn't pan out, for example, and Tua gets off to a slow start, do I have any doubts that they will end up benching him for Teddy Bridgewater? Not at all. And if they do, I think that that could be a really good thing because, again, I think that Teddy Bridgewater is one of those quarterbacks where he's sort of like Tyrod Taylor in a sense of people overlook him, but he still has a lot of potential and a lot of talent. And, again, I hope for Tua's sake that he can prove everyone wrong and he can you know, help lead this team to the promised land. I'm not sure. But, again, for his sake, I hope he does. But if not, they have a backup option in Teddy Bridgewater. Now, again, looking at the Dolphins' schedule, it is a mixed bag. I mean, you don't want to start off the season against the Patriots, Ravens, Bills, and Bengals if you don't have to. But supplementing it with games against teams like the Jets, the Lions, the Bears, you know, that's the best you could ask for. And while I have them going 9-8, and eight, unlike last year, the Patriots are also going 9-8. and eight. So this will set up an interesting dynamic between the two, and I realistically think both of them could have a shot of making it to the playoffs. Again, we'll have to wait and see till all the other teams pan out in my predictions. But again, the Miami Dolphins, they stay the same, but it's not an accurate representation because their schedule is very hard. But the Dolphins improved a lot this offseason and should be very optimistic heading into this upcoming season. Now, this one will probably be a controversial take. I really do not think that it should be, um, but I know a lot of Jets fans might be mad at me for this. So in advance, Jets fans, I'm very sorry Um, because I know there is a big hype train, a big, you know, feeling around um, NFL fans and NFL fan bases that the Jets are going to make the playoffs this year. I don't know how you look at their schedule and think that they can make the playoffs, but we'll get to that later. Let's start off with the positives, and that is their off-season moves. So, of course, last season the Jets were the Jets. Um, You have Zach Wilson coming in, um, a young quarterback. He didn't have the worst situation, but he didn't have the best situation. Um, They went 4-13, and and they missed the playoffs. And while that is bad, again, the Jets had one of the best better off seasons this year now Lakin Tomlinson at the offensive line is a fantastic player he's not the only good player they acquired in the off season I want to highlight him though because again this shows a commitment to protecting your young quarterback and making sure that he can be the most successful he can be there are a lot of teams out there who sort of just throw their quarterback you know to the wolves Um, I'm looking at you Joe Burrow Um, They want to make sure that Zach Wilson has enough time to make smart decisions and feed the ball to his wide receivers and tight ends and any other offensive players that they that he might be throwing to. Um, And he can do so without making mistakes. Again, they want to limit the mistakes that Zach Wilson makes. Now, how do you do that as well? You got to give him good weapons. And that's why they drafted Garrett Wilson in the um, NFL draft. Garrett Wilson is a good player. I don't think he's going to be a, you know, top 15 wide receiver ever, but I think that in a few years he could easily be a second or third wide receiver on a championship team. I 100% think that's the case. Now the real player I think everyone should be excited about is Ahmad Gardner, Sauce Gardner. He is going to be an incredible cornerback. In fact, I think he has a potential in a few years to sort of be in the same vein that we held people like Richard Sherman or Darrell Revis in. I think he's going to be that good. Will he be that good this season? No, he's going to go through the growing pains that all young cornerbacks go through. But again, I think that his potential of what he brings to the table is so great that it's going to be hard to overlook. Now, with all that positivity out of the way, I will once again repeat I don't know how people can look at the Jets' schedule and realistically say that they are going to the playoffs. 
Now, granted, maybe I was a bit harsh on them in certain weeks. Like, do I think there's a chance they can pull out a win against the Vikings in Week 13 and the Seahawks in Week 17? I absolutely do. But again, how many NFL franchises do you really think would have a winning record with their first five games being against the Ravens, the Browns, the Bengals, the Steelers, and the Dolphins? I don't think there's many that could. That's why I have them going 4-13 and 13 again. But sort of like I said about the Dolphins, just because they have the same record, it's not an indication of how good of a team they are. It's just the fact that every other team around them got good. But in two or three years, if the Jets keep making moves like they did this offseason, the Jets will be one of those teams that you fear. And with that being said, we're now going to move on to my top five offensive players in the AFC East. Okay, so how these player rankings are going to work is these are going to be my predictions for at the end of next season who the top five players in each of these divisions are going to be. And we're going to start off with the offensive players. And I'm starting out with New England Patriots quarterback Mac Jones. Mac Jones, as I said, for a rookie, had a relatively good year. 22 touchdowns, 13 interceptions, 3,801 yards, 50.9 QBR. Pro Football Focus had him ranked at 793 And again, I think he's only going to get better. I think that if anybody sleeps on Mac Jones, I understand it because, again, as I said, I will concede the Patriots did not have a great offseason. But again, I think that Mac Jones is a player. He will never be like Tom Brady, but I think he's going to be a similar enough player to where Bill Belichick, if he stays another 10 years and he improves their team and he makes smart draft choices, I think they can back to another Super Bowl with Mac Jones. Now, again, he could prove me wrong this year, but I don't think he will because I have I have faith in Mac Jones, and that's why I have him as my fifth best offensive player. I'm not going to give specific stat projections for how I think um, they will turn out, but I'm expecting that Mac gets at least 30 touchdowns this year. I hope so. Once again, Mac Jones, my fifth best offensive player in the AFC East. At number four, we have Miami Dolphins wide receiver Jalen Waddell. Now, going from one Alabama rookie to another Alabama rookie, Jalen Waddell last year took the league by storm. He had an 1,000-yard season, 104 receptions, six touchdowns, with an average of 9.8 yards per catch and a 78.3 rating from Pro Football Focus. Why do I think Jalen Waddell is going to be the fourth best player? Well, because I can tell you right now, a preview of who's going to be next, his teammate Tyreek Hill um, is going to make sure that Jalen Waddle gets more catches because he is going to demand more um, attention. Now, Jalen Waddle is either going to make the most of this or not make the most of this. And based on how he played last season, I think he will make the most of this. The biggest factor for Jalen Waddle will be Tua Tungavailoa. But I think, again, even if Tua doesn't do well, I think he will succeed despite him because I have that much faith in Jalen Waddle. So once again, the fourth best offensive player in the AFC East, Jalen Waddle, Miami Dolphins. And as if I did not already give this away, my third ranked offensive player is the new addition to the Miami Dolphins wide receiver Tyreek Hill. Now, again, in most other divisions, it would be egregious for Tyreek Hill not to be within the top two, but you will see why he's number three. Again, he is coming from an 1,000-yard season, 111 receptions, 9 touchdown, 11.2 average yards per catch season with Patrick Mahomes as quarterback in Kansas City, and he had an 85.1 rating from PFF. Now, again... He has Tua. I've heard all of that. But Tyreek Hill is an outstanding wide receiver. You could find someone on the street. You could find someone in a schoolyard. You could find someone anywhere to throw the ball to Tyreek Hill, and he will make it work. And I just don't think someone with his potential, his skill set, that he's going to be stopped by a potentially lackluster quarterback. So again, I have Tyreek Hill the new Miami Dolphins wide receiver 
at my number three. And my number two offensive player in the AFC East spot, I have Buffalo Bills wide receiver, Stephon Diggs. Now, Stephon has been quite controversial since last season. A lot of people felt that he fell off and he got overrated. And I'll explain why I have him at number two. But even with people sort of thinking he was a little overrated last year, in a thousand yard receiving season, 103 receptions, 10 touchdowns, 11.9 average yards per catch, and 82.1 pro football focus grade. Here's why I have him at number two because I think the Bills are going to be one of the better teams in the NFL. And the only way they are one of the better teams in the NFL is if Stefan Diggs steps up and has an incredible year. And I think he will. Um, not only because of the fact that, again, I think Josh Allen is going to be a monster this upcoming season, but because he doesn't really have many other options at this point on his receiving core list. Um, Stefan Diggs is going to have to show out when it matters most. And while he has not done that the previous few seasons, I think this is his year. And again, mark my words, Stefan Diggs is going to have a big year. He won't have a bigger year than the person who I have number one, but he'll have a big year. So once again, Buffalo Bills wide receiver Stephon Diggs, number two best offensive player in the AFC East. And if anybody didn't see this coming, um, I don't know what to tell you, but the number one offensive player in the AFC East, Buffalo Bills quarterback Josh Allen. Simply put, Josh Allen, I think, will have an MVP season this upcoming year. Because again, I think the Buffalo Bills are only going to lose two games. Now, last year, a 4,407 yard, 36 touchdown, 15 interception, 60.7 QBR year, 86.6 grade from PFF. He's everything you want from a quarterback nowadays. He can run, he can throw, great arm, great athleticism. He is the ideal quarterback. The issue is he's always run to roadblocks. It's never really been his fault that they haven't won. It's been that there have been circumstances that have come up where he was not able or given an opportunity to get the job done. And I think the NFL is going to be put on notice of how good Josh Allen is this year. Again, I'm not going to give a projection of his touchdowns, interceptions, yards, all I'm saying is be on the lookout because if you're playing the Buffalo Bills this year, Josh Allen is going to make sure you know he is coming to town. So again, the best offensive player, number one in the AFC East, Buffalo Bills quarterback Josh Allen. And now on to the defensive players. All right, starting out with my fifth best defensive player, we have Adrian Phillips, a safety for the New England Patriots. Now, Adrian Phillips is not a super well-known player, um, and his stats are not off the charts. 56 solo tackles, one forced fumble, four interceptions, and nine passes defended. He had an 80.5 grade from Pro Football Focus. So you might be asking, again, why is he on the list? Well, I'll tell you a very simple reason. J.C. Jackson's gone, and someone is going to have to step up for New England. Now, again, Adrian Phillips is getting on the older side, but if there is one thing that Bill Belichick does well is he puts older veteran players in key positions. And I think that the most logical person to step up for the New England Patriots is going to be Adrian Phillips. So that's why I have him at the number five of the best defensive players in the AFC East. At the number four spot, we have Miami Dolphins defensive tackle Christian Wilkins. So Christian Wilkins was drafted in 2019. He was their first round pick, and he had a decent season last year. 49 solo tackles, 4.5 sacks, and one forced fumble, an 83.3 grade from Pro Football Focus. And I think with the added weapons on the Miami Dolphins defense, Christian Wilkins is going to be a monster. Now, I'll give you a hint. He's not the only Miami Dolphins defensive player to make this list, but 
when you see the other player who we have and you take into account that there have been veterans like Melvin Ingram added, I think that Christian Wilkins is going to step it up and really solidify himself to maybe not be in the conversation of a top 10 defensive tackle, but definitely maybe in the top 15 defensive tackles in the league. Mark my words. So again, number four, Christian Wilkins, Miami Dolphins, defensive tackle. And my number three defensive player in the AFC East is Buffalo Bills safety Micah Hyde. Every good team has a have an enforcer in the front and an enforcer in the back. And I believe that Micah Hyde is going to be that enforcer in the back. Last year, he had 53 solo tackles, one forced fumble, five interceptions, and 10 passes defended with an 82.0 grade from Pro Football Focus. Again, Micah Hyde is one of the better safeties in the NFL, and with players like Tredavious White and newcomer Kair Elam, um, both having probably some growing pains to deal with throughout the first start of the season, Micah Hyde is going to be that veteran presence, and he is going to fill a lot of the void needed by those other two players that I previously mentioned. Again, every good team needs a leader in the front of their defense and the back of their defense, and Micah Hyde is going to be the leader of the Buffalo Bills' back defense. So once again, number three, Micah Hyde, safety, Buffalo Bills. My number two best defensive player in the AFC East is Miami Dolphins' defensive tackle, Zach Sealer. This is another player who might not get the recognition he deserves, but trust me, when you look at him compared to all other defensive tackles in the NFL, you understand why he is number two on my list. 33 solo tackles, two sacks, one forced fumble, 84.9 grade from Pro Football Focus. He's going to be 27 this year, and as I said, the Miami Dolphins have a ton of new weapons, and this is going to allow players like Zach Sealer to step up big time. I think this is going to be his best season in the NFL. I think that, again, there might be some struggles on the Miami Dolphins' offensive side of the ball with Tua getting adjusted to his new weapons, but I think that Zach Sealer is going to be one of the main defensive anchors for that Miami Dolphins team, and that is why I have him ranked at my number two best defensive player in the AFC East. So you're asking yourself, Von Miller, Buffalo Bills, linebacker, best defensive player. He's old. Why is he number one? I said this when I would have friends ask me about my thoughts on basketball players. Um, and they would ask me if I still thought LeBron was the best. I would always tell them, until he proves me otherwise, in my opinion, LeBron James is the best player in the NFL. In the NBA, excuse me. And until Von Miller proves me otherwise, I think he is going to be the best player in the AFC East. As I said, the Buffalo Bills need an enforcer on the front end and the back end. The front end, that's going to be Von Miller. He is going to wreck the competition. Last year, again, maybe not the best sample. 33 solo tackles, 9.5 sacks, one forced fumble, 88.7 grade from pro football focus. If I said that Josh Allen is going to be one of the reasons why I think the Buffalo Bills are going to have a great year, Von Miller is going to be the reason why they have an outstanding year. I think Von Miller is going to thrive in his new home in Buffalo because I think that his style of play is exactly what the Buffalo Bills fans need and want. So all I'm saying is you can sleep on Von Miller all you want. Um, and, you know, if I'm wrong and Von Miller, Miller has an awful season, you can come back and you can clown me um, at the end of next year. Um, I'll take it. But again... He has to be the one to prove me wrong. And until he does that, he is going to be the best defensive player in the AFC East. With that being said, this concludes my preview for the AFC East. Stay tuned. There are going to be more updates and more predictions for the other divisions coming soon. And I hope you will check them out. Please leave a comment, um, leave a like, and leave any feedback you might have on how I can improve this series. Because I really want to make this a long-standing series for years to come. But anyways, um, I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and I will be hopefully seeing you all again soon. Take care.